This video will provide an overview of the main features of the Labyrinth of Limitations application uh, to get you up and running. When you open the app, you have two windows that you'll see, the main window and a guitar fretboard. If for any reason, like if you're a pianist and you don't want to see the guitar fretboard, you can switch it out for a piano keyboard. If you click around in the uh, tesseract shape, which I'm not going to discuss in detail the theory of this. This is taken from uh, right now. I'll, I'll talk about it, and I have talked about it in my Labyrinth of Limitations YouTube channel, and I will be talking about it in future lessons uh, in that channel and also lessons within the app in future updates. Um, for now, just know that you can click around and it will change the chord. You can see the piano keyboard changing. So that would be if you're a pianist, but if I want the fretboard back, which I do, I can see the guitar fretboard and sheet music and a little bit of information. It tells me what, inf what inversion. Notice as I change chords, the app knows how to move to the chord in the smoothest possible way. This results in different inversions of the chord because that's how that's done. And so I'm at the fifth fret and one note went down to the fourth fret and one note went up when switching between this and this. You can see that the second string note is on the sixth fret and it's going to go up to the seventh fret. It takes a little getting used to because this is fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret. So that's the way the display works so that it all fits within this span. And I can click around and if I have a harmony that I want to explore, I can hit the right and left arrows of my keyboard. So it goes all the way down to the open strings of the sixth string. And if I want to practice a particular set of voicings on a particular set of strings, I can say limit to current strings. And now it just stays on those strings. Notice when I go down to the bottom, it goes back up to the top. And when I go up to the top, it does two things. It gets a little bit more range as it goes up, and then it switches down to the bottom. And then you get a little more range when you're going downwards down at the bottom. You see? how it works. So that is moving through a scale of chords. That's the name that Barry Harris gave to these structures. And it's a wonderful name. And Barry Harris's teachings are really important to me and to this application. And I'd strongly recommend uh, looking into them. There's lots of information. And Barry himself uh, gives a Zoom class right now at the time that I'm making this video on Saturdays, which is really wonderful to check out. Um, also, on the Labyrinth of Limitations YouTube channel, I discuss every harmony in this application in episodes 1 through 10. So, now that we've learned to do a little bit of movement by moving around in the Tesseract, and if I want to go up or down, I can hit my up and down arrows and notice that the labels changed. And this just means that I'm moving up chromatically by clicking on this same vertex. vertex I'm going up chromatically. Now, in your repertoire menu, there are songs listed here. This is where you save songs and overwrite songs and delete songs. And remember that deleting all of these functions up here are, are um, permanent. Um, but you can always delete a song that you've saved, a new song. But if you overwrite a song, it is permanently overwritten. The only way to get one of these songs back is to download the app again or install the app again. So we have all the things you are. I'm going to cue that up. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard and it will sequence. Now, notice that the next time it plays, it may make some different changes. It, it might sound a little bit different. might be a little lower on the neck as we play the next one. So 
it is improvising over the tune in subtle little ways. And that's a really fun thing. I can also hit the space bar and I can move through. I'm going to move up the scale of scores, chords with my right uh, arrow just to get up to a higher range. I'll go to the top strings. Oh, I need to allow that. Um, and now I'm going to go up to the top strings. So from here, uh, let's move forward. Maybe I'll go down a little bit so I'm in the middle range. So now I'm going to move forward to the five chord and see this label right here? This is a Barry Harris term, tritones minor, and that's discussed on my channel and elsewhere and in Barry's Zoom classes on Saturday. So um, every time I come to that part of the progression, I'm gonna go back one. All the commands, by the way, that I'm doing are found in keyboard shortcuts right here. So you can learn all the things. There's a pretty big list there. Let's take a look at that one more time. There's a large list of things, but you know, the most necessary things I'm showing you in this video. But um, so what I did was uh, I moved backwards. So I'm gonna move forward with the space bar. And now it's playing the dominant seventh flat five. Now it's playing the dominant seventh, diminished. So it randomly picks these and knows how to move to them smoothly. If I have one that I really like, so I'll do a six on the five and I can click it, and now it's red. Now every time I come up to it, that's what it's gonna play. So I can go back, I can play the sequence. So that is, uh, and then the next time it goes through the progression, it will do that same substitution again. Though notice, it's in a different part of the neck, so it is playing different notes, but it's the same substitution. It's the same pitch classes. This circle, in other words, looks the same no matter where it is on the neck because this is just showing you the note names. Now, if we wanted to add to this phrase, I will show you that really quick as part of this little kind of quick start video. I'm going to add a second phrase to all the things you are. All the things you are moves, it starts in A flat major with a six, two, five, one. And then I'm gonna click in this space and I get this harmonic selector. So this is how I enter progressions into the song. Notice it has a little thing for new phrase. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select E flat major because the song is now in E flat major for this part. It moves to E flat major right at the beginning of the second eight bars of the song. So here I am and I'm going to pick six and then two and then five and then one. Now what happens is the song moves to, uh, it does a quick five chord in the key of A flat major. So I'll do that. And then it goes to one in A flat major, so an A flat major six chord. And then I'm going to change my key once again to G minor. I'm going to type M on my keyboard and notice the display is now minor. And so now I'm going to hit two and then five and then I'm going to go to major again because it goes to G major after hitting a two half diminished chord, which is in the key of G minor. That's where that exists. I will have lessons going over this kind of thing. This provides us an opportunity to talk about analyzing tunes, which I'm really excited about. But you have five tunes loaded in the app that you can use to kind of learn from the process of, of how you might do this. Um, since I'm done with my progression now, I'm going to click here and close that window, or I could just close it at the top. So um, now I'm going to back up a little bit. Notice that that harmonic rhythm, if you know the tune, is not quite correct. Compare it to the first phrase. Sorry for the noise. Compare it with right here. So I'm gonna go from the beginning and notice how it speeds up the harmonic rhythm. So you have some short chords. So that is something that I can then do in the second phrase, and it's right here. So I clicked on that symbol, and it changed it to short. I can click it again and change it to long, but I want it to be short, and I'm going to click here and make that short. I'm going to click here and make that short. Click here and make that short. So here we go. Now, 
what if, um, like in the previous phrase, when notice when I get to this five chord, I decided to latch a harmony. So watch this. Sorry. Right there. That is the tritones minor. I'm going to do that same substitution in the second phrase. Right, I'll just phase, I'll just move forward. So here we are. And now I can do a number of things. I have controls in the keyboard shortcuts that show me how to move through different substitutions on this five chord without even backing up and going to the same place. So I'm going to change that to a tritones minor and that's how I do it. And now that is the tritones minor. So every time it comes up on that, it's going to do exactly what it did in the first progression, which is really nice. So, so here we go. And that's the second phrase of all the things you are. You can go to repertoire and say save into new slot, or you could overwrite the current slot. And it will provide you with the dialogue to name the song. And then you hit return, and the song is named. Um, I think that is a good place to stop for our overview. The manual, which is found in documentation um, instructions, and it'll pop up in your whatever your uh, viewer of PDFs is. And you can click here to kind of get to a section. There's our quick start. And there's some links where you can read about uh, the Tesseract. There's a link to Barry Harris's website and a link to a couple of my uh, places where you can get information. I hope that this has been helpful and informative on how the app works. This is the Labyrinth of Limitations. Thank you for viewing this and considering uh, subscribing.